unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. I have found in my experience that income does not far exceed personal development. Now, sometimes income takes a lucky jump. But sure enough, unless you grow out where it is, it'll usually come back where you are. Life has strange ways. If somebody hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire quickly. So you get to keep the money. Otherwise, sure enough, it'll disappear. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. See, the major question to ask on the job is not what are you getting? The major question to ask on the job is what are you becoming? See, the big question is not what am I getting paid here? The big question is what am I becoming? here because true happiness is not contained in what you get happiness is contained in what you become so that's our major subject for tonight personal development of all the assignments mr show gave me at age 25 this was probably the most difficult in fact i'm still working on this one i think it's an unending challenge to see what you can become the next subject is called basic laws And it's good to study the basics. And I call these basics primarily because they come from the Bible. Now, I'm not a theologian or a minister, and that'll be apparent. But Mr. Schoff taught me that the Bible was a good textbook for ideas and stories and success equations, how to live the better life. I found out that was true. He also taught me that the Bible is as practical as it is spiritual, and I found out that's true. If you look at your bank account and your income and you're not happy, there are several places in the Bible to check to see what the heck's wrong so you can make the changes. And we're going to cover some of those tonight called basics. Okay. The next subject is my favorite, setting goals. But she helped taught me how to set goals. What a favor that was. One morning at breakfast, shortly after I met him, he said, Jim, let me see your current list of goals and let's go over them and talk about them. He said, maybe that's the best way I can help you get a better direction started. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, is it out in the car or home somewhere? I said, um, no, sir. I don't have a list anywhere. He said, well, young man, that's where we got to start. He said, I can tell you right now, if you don't have a list of your goals with you, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance would change if I had a list of goals? He said, drastically. That day, I became a willing student how to set goals. And sure enough, learning how to set goals changed my life. And I often wondered why no one had ever taught me how to set goals up until age 25. I went to high school, but if they offered it, I missed it. I went to college for a year, never heard it. I worked for Sears. <laughs> really? And to my knowledge, Sears never taught it. Right? How to set goals. So here I am, age 25, married, my family's starting, I've been to college, I'm working, and I still don't know how to set goals. But fortunately, when I was 25, I met the man who taught me how, and it revolutionized my whole life. Economically, socially, personally, it's incredible. So I want to share with you tonight what Mr. Shove shared with me, how to set goals. It can be a life changer. Okay. The next subject is the negative part of the seminar. Life is part negative, so we've got to talk about the negative. And this subject is called diseases of attitude. Diseases of attitude. There's a lot of things that can wreck your chances to do well. We live in a rather dangerous world, so you've got to be not only wise, you've got to be careful. Now, attitude diseases are just as bad as physical diseases, right? High blood pressure, heart trouble. I mean, a lot of things lace your chances to do well. So you've got to be careful. And attitude diseases are deadly. I mean, they'll destroy all the good things you start. Okay. 
So we'll go through those attitude diseases, how to spot them, how to look for them, what they are, and, and the cure. And I'm a pro on these because I've had them all, so I can give you excellent advice on these. Now, the last subject we're going to consider tonight is called the day that turns your life around. The day that turns your life around. And under this subject, we're going to talk about the emotions that can change your life. Human beings are emotional creatures. And emotions are powerful for life change. Now, of course, emotions are so powerful, they can go either way on you. Emotions can either build or destroy. So you really have to employ emotions properly. We call civilization the intelligent management of human emotions. If you can intelligently apply your emotions in the right direction, no telling what can happen. You could turn your life around one day would be sufficient. So we'll talk about those. Okay. Now that's a lot to cover in one evening. But uh, we'll keep at it here. And see if we can't get it all done. I'd like to have you now jot down the theme of the seminar. Every seminar should have a theme, I guess. We've got one. It's on some of our literature if you happen to notice it. But if you didn't, for your notes, here it is. The theme of the seminar goes like this. The major key to your better future is you. That's the theme of our seminar tonight. The major key to your better future is you. And I'd like to have you underline two words just to give it some added punch. Underline the word major and the word you. So that it reads, the major key to your better future is you. Now, my first suggestion is transfer this to a card or something where you can put it up, where you can see it every day. Preferably put it up where you can see it at the beginning of the day. Before you go off to put the day together, this is a good phrase just to glance at, to keep in mind as you're putting the day together. It's called the silent seminar. If you'll just let this talk to you during the day, I found it to be tremendously helpful. The major key to your better future is you. <laughs> For a big share of my life now, I didn't have uh, this one quite figured out. Among a lot of things I didn't have quite figured out. Many things used to puzzle me back in those early days. I used to wonder why two people could work for the same company, one make twice as much money. Now, see, that used to puzzle me. And maybe they were the same age, graduated from the same school, live in the same community, work for the same company, with the same products and the same services. They've got the same traffic, the same problems, and one makes 1000 a month, the other one makes 2000 a month. Now that was my puzzling question. Why would this long list be the same and the money twice as much? I asked, what's the difference between a thousand a month and two thousand a month? And I don't mean a thousand a month, right? I could figure that out. But what, what makes the difference? Why would one person do twice as well, three times as well, speaking economically? Now I know there's more than one way to do well. I understand that. But in this little narrow area called compensation, what's the difference? Well, back then, with my faulty thinking, I'm trying to reason it out. I thought, well, maybe time makes some of the difference, right? Some people do better because they have more time. I used to say, Harold ought to be able to do well. He's got a lot of time. If I had all of Harold's time, I could do well. Now, that's got to be dumb, right? Number one, you can't get somebody else's time. A guy says to me one time, he says, you know, if I had some extra time, I could make some extra money. I said, then forget it. There isn't any extra time. <laughs> hey, when the clock strikes 12 midnight, that about wraps it up, right? I mean, you can look around the gongs there for a little more, but it's over. You say to the guy, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for extra time. See, they'll come and take you away, right? <laughs> there isn't any more time. Now, if you can't get more time, which you can't, what could you get more of that would make a difference in economic results? And here's the key word. Make it a part of your notes. We're going to consider it tonight. The word is value. And I have a little phrase for your notes. Value makes the difference in results. Value makes the difference. You can't get more time, but you can create more value. 
Now, here's the first lesson of economics. Everybody should learn it from the time they're old enough to understand what a dollar means, how to earn one, how to get one, how to keep one, what to do with it. First lesson of economics. We primarily get paid for value. That's lesson one. Bringing value to the marketplace, that's how you get paid. You don't get paid for the time. I know it takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but you get paid for the value, not the time. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the evening. Is it possible to become twice as valuable at the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? Could you become three times as valuable? Make three times as much money in the same time. Is that possible? The answer is yes, if. And it's always if, right? Life is known as the big if. Harry Truman once said, life is iffy. How true. And here's the big if we're going to consider it tonight. It's possible to do much better at the marketplace if you go to work primarily on yourself. And that's the theme of our seminar tonight. Learning to work primarily on yourself. People have asked me for the last 24 years, how do you develop an above average income? And the answer is become an above average person. Develop an above average handshake. Some people want to be successful, but they don't even work on their handshake. As easy as that would be to start on. They let it slide. They don't understand. Develop an above average smile. Develop an above average excitement. Develop an above average interest in other people. Develop an above average intensity to win. See, that'll change everything. Probably one of the most frustrating experiences in life is looking for an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. It's called frustration. And Mr. Schoff gave me probably the greatest clue he gave me when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy the rest of your life, just learn this lesson well. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Then Mr. Schoff gave me probably one of the most important clues among so many things he taught me, but this was in those early days. Mr. Schoff was very kind, but he was also very abrupt. And he had these interesting questions to ask. I'm giving him a little run day, rundown one day on how things hadn't worked out for me. He said, Mr. Owen, I've got the answer for you. If you will listen carefully. And listen carefully, I did that day and for the next five years. If somebody's wealthy and happy, you've got to listen. He said, Jim, I've only known you a short time. But he said, it's already my honest opinion that for things to change for you, you've got to change. That wasn't quite the answer I was looking for. But that's the answer he gave me. And I pass it along to you on this warm summer evening in Anaheim, California, 1981. For things to change for you, you've got to change. Otherwise, it isn't going to change. Before I met Mr. Show, I used to say, I sure hope things will change. <laughs> right? That seemed to be my only hope. If it isn't going to change, I'm in serious trouble. And then I discovered it isn't going to change. So I'm in serious trouble. See, I can tell you what the 80s are going to be like. You have dropped into the right place. I did a seminar one time for Standard Oil executives and management in Honolulu. And uh, we're having a conference one day on this big conference table. And one of them said to me, Mr. Rowan, you know some fairly important people halfway around the world. What do you think the 80s are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I do know the right people. I can tell you. 
So they all listened very carefully. And I said, gentlemen, based on my wide experience, I can really honestly say to you, in my opinion, in the 80s, it's going to be about like it's always been. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came? That's inside. I don't pass that around just everywhere. Now, of course, I said that to make a point, but I also said it because it's accurate. It's going to be about like it's always been. It isn't going to change. The tide comes in and then what? It goes out for six and a half thousand years that we know of, recorded history, and probably long before that. So it is not going to change. It gets light and then what? It turns dark. Six and a half thousand years. See, it's not likely to change. So that's Jim Rohn, ladies and gentlemen. The major focus of that seminar that he was speaking to in 1981 still applies today. Change. How are we changing ourselves, our culture within ourselves, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, who we take information from. Um, there's a quote by Wendell Pierce, who's an actor. He plays in um, Jack Ryan currently. It's, it's a great show on Amazon Prime. Uh, the role of culture is that it, it's the form through which we as a society reflect on who we are, where we've been, and where we hope to be. Wendell Pierce. The role of culture is that it's the form through which we as a society reflect on who we are, where we've been, and where we hope to be. I know for me personally, um, where I'm at now is not where I once was. Um, and that's progress, right? We should all be progressing to where we want to be. And that's a part of what Jim was saying too, goals, mindset, um, who we are speaking to, what information we are attaining and holding on to to better our lives. So for me, a couple of years ago, uh, I was working retail. I wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied where I was at. I thought it was more to life than just being in retail, selling stuff. Um, but then it created a culture change within my mind, what I did day to day. Prior to my change today, what I did on my day-to-day -day basis was um, not what I'm obviously doing today will push me further along in the path that I wanted to make for myself and my future. So um, a, a lot didn't change for me, whether it was food, how I ate, the things that I um, put inside my body I used to eat. And, and no, not, you know, people eat chicken, beef, pork, and all that stuff. But for me, it was, it was a change for me. Um, I went on a plant-based diet. Um, I chose to just cleanse myself. I did a, a few detoxes. It was about five years ago, six years ago. Um, but that was step one for me. What The fuel that I was putting in my body, in my mind, where was it taking me? How was it charging me? Um, what energy was it giving? You know, that was a culture that I was setting, whether it was eating 11 o'clock at night, then going to bed at 12 and waking up at 11 a.m., that was the culture that I was setting my day to day, um, whether it was not reading books once upon a time to now reading books today. Um, that was the culture change in my day to day, whether it was getting a mentor. One of the things that I asked um, God for in my prayers for those that you know are believers, um, I asked God for the right people to put me on the right path with the right information. That was my culture change. Uh, me meeting Chris. One day at Jason's event and asking, you know, God, to, you know, get me in the right uh, room with the right person so I can have a mentor and kind of lean on somebody. That was my culture change to today. So what I implore you guys to do, if you're not doing it already, but if you are, just keep going. Right. Because um, this is a never ending cycle of life. These are the things that pop up on a day to day. Uh, we may start at, uh, you know, level zero, work our way to a level seven, whether that's in your uh, faith, family, uh, finances, you just progressing in these levels. Um, you never know. Life happens, right? So what are we doing to implement a strong mind, a strong body, a strong spirit? What kind of change, what kind of shift, what kind of culture are we setting, uh, goal setting, like uh, Rome said in the video? What are we doing? to better ourselves as a human being to create more value in the marketplace. That's the key to create more value in the marketplace. Everybody has a commonality on this call, which is we are impacted by our finances. Uh, we're impacted with our emotions and our energy, whether it's situations that we can control or cannot. 
whether it's family situations, whatever the case may be, but what are we doing to better ourselves so things around us get better in our environment? Um, that is very key in our everyday lives, uh, where we want to go, how we want to do it. Um, are we being lazy? Are we isolating ourselves? Are we talking to the right people? Um, do we feel stagnant? And if we are feeling stagnant, what are we doing about it? Like I said, do we have the right people? Are we connected? Everybody on this call, how much do we talk to each other? How much do we reach out? Um, a lot of things we may not share with each other, uh, whether it be very personable or just not in the mood, but what are we doing to rally around each other uh, to make sure that we're all going in the same direction? Because it's clearly, like I said, a commonality on this call that we're all going in the same direction. We want better for our finances. We want better for our family. We want better just for our entirety of our lives. What are we doing? Pat Riley, if you guys don't know, is a head coach once upon a time of the uh, the Knicks, I uh, believe he's the Lakers, but he ended up coaching the Heat for some time. And he's known as the godfather of basketball because the many successful seasons that he had at the Knicks, he wanted ownership. He wanted an ownership stake that the Knicks didn't want him to have a part of his contract. So um, that off season, um, the owner of the Heat, he came to Pat Riley and he said, I'll give you everything you want. I want you to change my organization. And as we know today, they call it the Heat culture. So everybody in the NBA, from LeBron James to any, any person on the Pelicans, everybody knew about this standard that the Miami Heat has and who created that standard, which is Pat Riley, the legendary NBA coach. Um, and I said that to say, what kind of culture are we setting? Is it the Heat culture or is it the Patriot way, right? Tom Brady, uh, the greatest quarterback that ever played the game by most people and one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest coach of the NFL and Bill Belichick, they created the Patriot way. And they did that for years, from the year 2000 to about 2020, all the successful seasons that they had. They had a culture that a certain way that they did things every single day, every single week, every single month. They came in with a certain attitude. They had a certain uh, person, people around them in their journey of going through their seasons. Like Jim Rohn says, you got different seasons in your life, whether it's winter, summer, spring, fall. How are you reacting to these different seasons? What are we putting in place to make sure that we have the proper mindset? How many books are we reading? What books are we reading to establish these traits, these characters that we need to rest upon and rely on as we go through these different challenges in our lives? This is a new year. This is 2024. God knows what will happen in our economy from the fair rates, uh, the interest rates to the housing market. Um, to the legislation and bills that's being passed, all the things that we're seeing, whether it's from a regional standpoint, a state standpoint, or just a worldwide standpoint, how are we moving in the midst of these seasons that are changing? So I would implore you guys to make sure that you have a good culture, have, have the right people in your ear, in, in that being prayer, obviously, listen to that that voice that we know to, to be God, or whether that's listening to our mentors our missing, or listening to the people that's around us, like I said earlier, that are on the same path. It's happening with Sean Moore. It's happening uh, with Trina. It's happening with Elijah. Just make sure that we're tapped into each other because this is our team, guys. The ones that show up every week, the ones that are doing the work, that have the licenses, like I said earlier, or the ones that's thinking about coming on the other side, whether it's coming from the nine to five, on over to entrepreneurship, make sure you get around the right people. Make sure that you're uh, getting instilled in you the things that you want to be a better value in the marketplace. How are we creating a value in the marketplace? Um, these are the things that needs to be implemented. If you're not doing so already, I will encourage you to do so. Please reach out. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody on this call is friendly. Everybody on this call is um, a asset, a resource, um, to be relied on in whatever way, whether that's finances, whether that's, hey, we just need to talk about family, whether that's uh, we need to talk about uh, friendship, whatever that is, this community. Community is very, very, very key, guys. Community is very, very key. Stay close to the fire, as Chris says. Stay real close to the fire. This is our fire. Our team is our fire. So 
this is my first one that I had. And um, since I started with uh, WFG with Chris and the team, um, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Hopefully I started uh, on time. and I think I finished on time as well. Um, thanks, Sean. So this is um a pleasure. Like again, I, I wanted to do this partly because it was my birthday. I said, hey, let me start off my birthday to, you know, do something kind of cool and step out on the limb because I don't really talk a lot. Um, but <laughs> I think I need to talk more. And this was great talking to you guys. Um, pl please feel free to get somebody else on the call the next time. Invite three or four more people on the next call. Whoever's running that, maybe Sean. Um, whoever decides we're on it, but make sure we get enough people on this, guys. Let's share our mission, our vision. Let's keep the fire rolling. Let's keep it hot, and let's get people on board. We're going places. We have a lot of impact. We have a lot of value to share to the masses. We have a lot of passion on this team. Let's make sure that we uh, celebrate that passion by spreading that passion to everybody that we come in contact with. Thank you guys for the, ha for the happy birthdays. Let's make sure we spread that content, that 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 content and that passion um, that we have for what we're trying to do. Getting the family A side to the family B side, making sure that people are well rounded in their finances from a foundational standpoint of how we can impact the families, and the loved ones, the friends, our entire community. Um, but that's it, guys. You guys have a blessed day.